I think I had someone on one of my student surveys last semester <laughs> actually said that I should stop saying that it's fun, that things are fun. So this isn't fun anymore. We're not allowed to have fun. I should say it's fun for me. How about that? Is that better? All right. We're trying to do this. One, two, this graph went like this. One, and this was eight, right? Now on your drawing of this, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do lots of drawings of this picture. You don't have to be perfect. Don't get your ruler out. Just get enough information that you can figure out you know, what was going on. My first estimate, OK? My first estimate. What I'm going to do is I'm going, because remember, with the circle, we said, let's start off with the square. And if we could add more squares, we get a better estimate. I'm going to start off with like the most crude, worst estimate of this area that I could even think of. Okay, And it's this estimate right here. I'm going to go out from here to here, from 0 to 2. And then I'm going to go from here all the way up. And I'm basically going to create one rectangle like this. On the camera, when you go back to view videos, blue does not come out. It all looks the same, so just FYI. You won't get that effect at home. But there's my rectangle, OK? That rectangle is way off, isn't it? It's way, way, way too much area, isn't it? But what's more important is for us to understand how we measure this rectangle. So someone tell me about the width of this rectangle. How wide is it? Two. two. Right? So this distance right here is two. And how high is it? Eight. You're getting that, you're getting eight over here by taking two and plugging it into the function, right? That's how you're getting eight? So this eight, I'm going to call it f of two instead, and then write next to it eight. So I have one rectangle here in this problem. The, the rectangle I have, I have one of them. So I'm going to say R1. My first rectangle, which is the only one in this problem, is 2 times 8, or 2 times f of 2, width times length, which is 2 times 8, which is 16. Yes? And we know that that estimate sucks real bad. So how could I get a better estimate than that? Instead of using one rectangle, how about I do two, right? So now instead, this right here, that was one rectangle, OK? One rectangle. Now let's try it with two. And you just have to believe in me here that this is going somewhere, all right? That we're actually headed somewhere with this, all right? Right now, we are using the method of exhaustion to try and get to an answer. So when I do my two rectangles, here's the way I'm going to do it. I have that same generic picture, right, like this. This goes out to two. My two rectangles, why not just cut this number line from zero to just cut it right in half and make my two rectangles based on that? So my first rectangle, this is how wide it will be. And the height of that rectangle will only go up to this point right here and then come over with it, and that's my first rectangle. Do you all see that one? I'll call that R1. And then my next rectangle will go from here to here as the base, and then my height will go up to the edge. But this time, we have that. Would you agree that this picture is better than this one as far as an estimate? Still, still sucks pretty bad, but it's better, isn't it? So I'll call this R2 right here. What is the area of R1? How wide is it? It's one unit wide, right? Everyone's OK with that? So it's 1 times how high is it? 1. How are you getting 1? F of 1, right? You, you come over to 1, you plug 1 into the function, that's how high it is. So I'm going to put here F of 1, which in this case, 
When you do one cubed, you get one. Do y'all follow me on that? Where the, where the f of one is going to become one here? So I get one, one times one. So the area of that little rectangle is one. Now what's the area of the second rectangle? So how wide is it? It's one again times, this time f of two again. And that's one times f of two, we already did that, that's eight. So eight, one times eight. So what's the total area then of my estimate? The total area of my estimate is R1 plus R2, isn't it? It's those two rectangles added together, which is nine. So this estimate really, really way off, 16. This one's nine, I'm getting better, okay? What would be a better approximation? More rectangles, right? We are going to mechanically, right now by hand, do three, four, and five rectangles by hand. This is what your take home quiz tonight's gonna be. I'm just gonna give you a different function. All right, so now's the time to ask questions. All right, what about three rectangles? Because you, I want you to start getting a pattern established here of what's, there's something happening and we're eventually going to create a formula. But we've got to build to that formula. I, I don't want to just throw it right there in your face and like, here's a formula, there it is. Don't ask me where it came from. I want three rectangles, right? This time? Well, with two rectangles, it was nice. We just cut it right there at one, right? Just cut it right in half. But now if I went three rectangles, then where are these going to occur? Like, what are, the, what are the values? If I cut two into three equal pieces, what are those numbers? How long is this? Two. two? You're going to cut it into how many pieces? Three. Two divided by three is not two thirds. So, isn't this two thirds, right? Then add another two thirds. What's two thirds plus another two thirds? Two thirds, come on, plus two thirds is four thirds, right? Okay, four thirds here. And then the next one, if I had another two thirds, that would be six thirds, which is two, right? Do y'all see that? You've got to have these points, so you got to know what they are. So my rectangles look like this. Come up, over, up over, up, over. Better, it's better than this though, right? It's, it's better than this estimate. The more rectangles I get, the less error, E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, less error I have, right? Let's talk about the first rectangle. Rectangle one, two, and three. What's rectangle one? Let's talk about how wide rectangle one is. How wide is rectangle one? How wide is it? Two thirds, right? Two thirds? So two thirds times how high is it? How high is it? Isn't that the height right here? That's the height of the function, right? So that's what I get when I plug what into the function? Two thirds. So f of two thirds. What is f of two-thirds? Two-thirds cubed. Isn't it? And to save us some time, you've got to ask questions if you've got any, please. I was talking to one of my other classes about, what's that uh, the movie, um, Titanic? Do you remember at the end when Leonardo DiCaprio is like freezing and like sinking into the abyss? And his girlfriend's like holding him or whatever and he just slowly goes and dies, right? I don't want you all to get to that point in this class where I just see you going into the abyss <laughs> slowly, you know. Hold on, I've got a life vest, you just got to ask for it, all right? Um, you need a boat though, right? You don't need the life as you need a boat, you're gonna freeze your ass off, so. 
Uh, now, just, just to save us time, I went ahead and multiplied this all out, because that's all just some algebra. This is 16 over 81. All right, what's rectangle 2? How wide is rectangle 2? It's again 2 thirds, right? Because how did we get from 2 thirds out to 4 thirds? We added another 2 thirds. Aren't all the widths of the rectangles always going to be the same? Yes. If we cut them up equally? So the width is 2 thirds here. And how high is it? F of 4 thirds this time. Because now what we're doing is we're trying to find this height. And this height is the function's value at 4 thirds. And that means you have 2 thirds times 4 thirds cubed. And that's 128 over 81. You understand where the cube's coming from? Yes. The original function. Was that what you were asking? Like, where is he getting this cube from? The original function, this function, is x cubed, right? So that's why I'm saying f of x, f of whatever is that cubed. On your test, on your take home quiz, it's the same exact question using x squared instead of x cubed. So you're going to be doing all of basically what I'm doing with x squared, which means it's going to change these things. All right, we, st we continue. Uh, third rectangle. How wide is the third rectangle? Two thirds. How high is it? F of two. So this is two thirds times two cubed, which we already know was eight, but then you have to take two thirds. So that's 16 thirds. So my new area approximation the area of this, these three rectangles added up, if you do it on your calculator, the exact answer is 64 over 9, if you were to do it all with common denominators and then reduce your fractions, which is approximately 7.1. Now I said I was going to do five rectangles, right? I don't want to do five if I can avoid it. Are, do, you, do you at least see the pattern of what's happening here, what we're doing? Anyone have a question? Okay. If you're OK with that, I'm going to skip 4 and 5. And I'm now going to move on to the big one. This is the big daddy. This is where we have to make the connection. Instead of three rectangles, I want to use n rectangles. n rectangles. <coughs> Whew, OK. n rectangles. Tell me about this first rectangle. I'm just going to mark it right here, OK? That first rectangle, how far down the number line am I? What is that? I, I, made, I cut it into n rectangles. So what did I do if I cut it into two rectangles? How wide were they? When I did two rectangles? <laughs> When I did one rectangle, how wide was each rectangle? It was two, because there was only one of them. When I did two rectangles, how wide was it? One. one. When I did three rectangles, how wide was it? Two thirds. I want you to see something. All of these numbers came from doing this, this calculation. It was, well, how long is it? How long is this? Two divided by how many rectangles? One, right? So what's two divided by one? Two. OK, how long, how wide was it? Two. How many rectangles? Two. So how wide was each one? One. OK, how long was the function? Two. How many rectangles? Three. So that's how I got it. I took how long it was divided by how many rectangles I wanted, and that's how long each piece was, each, or how wide each rectangle was. Does that make sense? So how wide is this one then? Or I should say, where is this on my number line? What is that? 2 over n. Good. It's how long it is divided by n. Yes? The next rectangle will be the same width, won't it? But it's the same width, but where is it on the number line? I, I want a slightly different approach. It's, it's 2 over n, but then another one of them, right? So you would say 2 of those? 2 2 over n's? 
So I'm going to write it down that way. It's 2, 2 over n's, which we know is 4 over n, isn't it? But I'm leaving it as 2, two times 2 over n for a reason. What would my next one be? 3, 2 over n's, right? And what would my next one be? 4, 2 over n's. And I'd continue that, wouldn't I? All right. Anybody need the boat yet? Life vest? So the next one would be 4, 2 over n's, 5, 2 over n's, 6, 2 over n's, all the way until I get out to the last one, which would be n, 2 over n's. So let me put this last one, right? This last one is n, 2 over n's, and holy shit, what is n times 2 over n? It's 2, which is my last one, isn't it? The last one should be 2, isn't it? So n, 2 over n's is 2. OK, let's talk about rectangle 1. Rectangle 1 is how wide, now they all have the same width, don't they? How wide is rectangle 1? 2 over n times f of what? 2 over n, which is 2 over n times 2 over n cubed. So I'm taking how wide it is, 2 over n, times how high it is, which is f of 2 over n. f of 2 over n is 2 over n cubed. OK, that is whatever it is. I'm not even going to mess with it. What about the second rectangle? How wide is it? 2 over n times how high is it? f of 2 times 2 over n, right? Again, you could write that as 4 over n, but don't. Don't, because you'll, you'll see why in a second. 2 over n, now this is times what? 2 times 2 over n cubed. Anybody have a headache yet? A little bit? Do you feel like you're actually doing math right now? Or does this feel like it's math? Or OK, next one. Third rectangle is what? 2 over n times f of what? 3, Three times 2 over n, which is 2 over n times 3 times 2 over n cubed. We'll do one more. Well, two more. What about the fourth one? And then the rest, right? So you see it's just all that's happening, every one of these now. The only thing that's changing is this three and now going to become a four. So the fourth rectangle is 2 over n times f of 4 times 2 over n, which is 2 over n times 4 times 2 over n cubed. What did I mess up? What? Where? Yes, but no, th this isn't the fourth one. There's not four here. There's n of them. Oh. That's important because even though it looks like I'm only drawing four, how many rectangles are actually in here? There's n of them. I just, I mean, I can't really, I don't know what n is yet, right? So I can't really draw n rectangles. There's a bunch of them though. But let's talk about it. what would the nth rectangle look like then? What would the nth one be? 2 over n times f of n times 2 over n, which is 2 over n times n times 2 over n cubed. You ready? You could put this as a 2, but I'm not doing it intentionally, as you're going to see on the next step. OK? This is all for a reason. You ready? This, this is the part that gives me goosebumps. All right, this is the part I like. What's the area, what is our area estimate? Add them all up, right? Add them up. 
How many of them are there? How many rectangles are there? N of them. We have a nice condensed way of writing sums of a bunch of things, don't we? It's called summation notation or sigma notation. So I'm trying to add this plus this plus this plus this dot 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 plus this will be my last one, right? I want to add all those together. What's the only thing changing in, these, in each one of these formulas? There's only one thing changing. What is it? What, what, where is it though? It's the number in front of this 2 over n, right? It's, and this one up here is actually a 1, isn't it? Isn't it? Woo, I feel them. Okay, here we go. So watch this. Isn't this then just the sum k equals 1 to n of this 2 over, over n times k times 2 over n cubed. So that when I plug in 1, I get the first rectangle. When I plug in 2, I get the second rectangle, third rectangle, fourth, all the way to the nth rectangle, don't I? Now what's the only thing that's affected here as I start summing? What's the only thing changing here? The K. The K. So watch this. This is absolutely, we didn't do this before because you didn't really know where we were going with this. So it wouldn't have made sense for me to do this earlier. But watch this. If K is the only thing being affected, then let me do a little bit of algebra on this. 2 over n sitting out here. Let's cube this. Okay? Let's cube this. So when you cube a product, you cube each one, right? What's k cubed? Well, k cubed. Times, what's 2 over n cubed? 8 over n cubed, right? You cube the, you cube the 2, you cube the n. Yes? Now multiplication is commutative, so I can slide things around. And I can make this sum k equals 1 to n of 16 over n to the fourth times k cubed. So all I did here was the 8 times the 2 at 16, n times n cubed, n to the fourth on the bottom. My k cubed's right there. You still there? Now if k is the only thing changing, if k is the only thing changing, then this has no effect on all of the other terms. In, in other words, I can pull this out of the sum as a product on the outside. So I can take this out and say 16 over n to the fourth times sum k equals 1 to n of k cubed. And the only reason I could pull this out is because it's basically a constant, isn't it? If this is a thousand, right, if that's a, if that's a thousand right there, then that's just 16 over 1,000. And then I multiply times another, times a number, and then the next one, next one, next one. They all have that in them, don't they? Each term has that. So I can factor it out in the, out of the whole sum. And I guess I'm, I'm concerned that you, you're not convinced I can pull this out. Are you OK with the idea of me pulling that out or not? Because it's, k is not affected by it. OK, what is this? That's one of the common sums. One of the common sums I gave you. What does that add up to be? N squared times N plus 1 squared over, over 4. OK, so now what I have is this. I have 16 over N to the fourth times N squared times N plus 1 squared all over 4, right? Everyone understand that this turns into this because of a formula I gave you, but I didn't prove to you. I said that's going to be proven by math people with induction, right? Let's clean this up. n squared over n to the fourth, right? That becomes an n squared on the bottom. 4 goes into 16 how many times? 4 times. So I'm sitting here and I'm looking at this. 4 n plus 1 squared over n squared. 
And lastly, do this, and you'll see why in a second. Go ahead and multiply that. What's n plus 1 times n plus 1? Foil it out, you get n squared plus 2n plus 1. Distribute your 4 through. I know I talked fast there. 4n squared plus 8n plus 4 all over n squared. So I squared this, right? In my head, I squared it. That became n times, or n squared times, ah, n squared plus 2n plus 1, and then I distributed a 4 to each of those terms. That's this. This is the area of my estimate using n rectangles. That's it. So what if I use one rectangle? What if I use one? Plug one in right there, what do you get? One rectangle, what do you get? What is it? 16? Does that, does that check with what we got earlier? Plug in two, two rectangles. What would you get? Plug two in there. Two squared four. Four times four, 16 plus 16, 32 plus 36 over two squared is four, 36 is nine. You get nine. Does that match what we got earlier? Plug in three, you get what we would get with three. You all happy? Okay. So, do you remember I was saying with the circle that the Chinese were adding more and more rectangles and that was called the method of exhaustion, right? The method of exhaustion. And it was exhausting because you could have a thousand rectangles and it's still no good, right? You could have 10,000 and it's still not right. What you need is infinite number of them, right? Well, well, isn't n the number of rectangles I have? What would happen if I let the number of rectangles go to infinity? So go back over here to your picture and imagine an infinite number of rectangles. Wouldn't that basically be measuring the area of this thing if there were infinitely many rectangles in there? Wouldn't it? So what happens to that as n goes to infinity? Yes, this is a Cal 1 problem. What is the limit as n goes to infinity of 4n squared plus 8n plus 4 over n squared? So where does the numerator go when you take that, when you let n go to infinity, where does this go? Top goes to, come on, I know Christmas break was a good break, but let n get huge, what happens to this? It goes to infinity, where does this go? Infinity. What happens when you have infinity over infinity? How many of you learn L'Hopital? How many of you have no idea what the hell L'Hopital is? It's okay if you don't, I need to see your hands. If you don't know what L'Hopital's rule is, okay? Make sure that, make a note of that, okay? Talk to me or get with the tutoring lab or something. L'Hopital is something I would expect that you would know. It, derivative over derivative, basically, yes, that's, that's L'Hopital. But you can only, yeah, you can only have it if you, if what? You can only use L'Hopital's rule if you have what over what? Infinity over infinity or zero over zero, which we have infinity over infinity. So apply L'Hopital's rule one time, and you get what? Derivative of the top is 8n plus 8 over the bottom, 2n. That still goes to infinity over infinity. Apply L'Hopital's rule again. You get limit n goes to infinity of what? Derivative of the top is 8, derivative of the bottom is 2, which is 4. Well, guess what? The area under that curve is 4. That's it. That's the exact area of the, of the curve, underneath that curve. Yes? Yes. Yes, this is a polynomial up top. You can use 4n squared over n squared. 
get the same answer? You mean like split it up into three different? I mean, because you have the same power. And oh, yeah, and just get the four over one? You could do it that way, but I mean, if it's something other than this, like if this were like, you know, I don't know, if there was like a square root of n squared plus one, you couldn't really do that. But, but yes, in this case, you could. But L'Hopital is so quick and, and yeah. you know, it just works. Okay, that, that okay? We still have seven minutes and there's still one more thing I want to show you. So this, this whole thing I've done right here, okay? This whole thing I've done is called Riemann sums. It's named after a mathematician, Riemann. And he figured out a way of finding areas under curves by adding up a bunch of rectangles and then doing an infinite number of them and you could find the exact area. Pretty, pretty nice, but troublesome, isn't that? I mean, that's, that function was nice, x cubed. If our function becomes complicated, the Riemann sums become extremely difficult to do. All right? So, let's see how many of you know what an antiderivative is. How many of you saw that? Let's see, show of hands, how many of you looked at antiderivatives? How many of you, no idea? No idea, antiderivatives? I think you'll, we're gonna spend a lot of next class on antiderivatives, but check this out. If you take, let's say you have a function like this, f of x equals 2x. The antiderivative of this, the antiderivative is the function that when you take the derivative of that function, you get this. So we use the notation capital F of x equals x squared. So just look at this. If, if, if capital F of x is x squared, what's the derivative of x squared? It's 2x. So the antiderivative of 2x is x squared, right? Try another one. Let's say I give you a little f, and let's say it's x squared. What's the antiderivative of x squared? How about this? We will spend time on it. Don't worry, I'm going to give you a formula and everything else. But do you agree that if I take derivative of this, I get that? Because what happens if I take derivative here? 3 comes down, they cancel, and I reduce the power by 1, I get x squared, don't I? Yes? Last one. If little f of x equals x cubed, what's the antiderivative of that? one-fourth x to the fourth. Don't panic, okay, if you have no idea where that's come from because there will be a formula, but just agree that if I take derivative of this, I get that. You need to be able to see that. Derivative of this is that. All right? Everyone okay with that? Now, this is, I do only have three minutes. We go to 240, right? There's something in this class called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. Sounds important, right? Fundamental theorem of calculus. And here's basically what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. It says this. If you are looking, we're going to spend a lot of time on this, but if you're looking at a function between two points, A and B, and you're looking here to here at this function, and let's call this function little f of x. then the area under this curve can be found pretty easily. Without doing Riemann sums and method of exhaustion, it can be found pretty simple. And the way it's found is as follows. All you have to do is find the capital F of x. Find the antiderivative of the function. Once you find it, calculate this. f of b minus f of a. This endpoint plugged into the antiderivative minus this endpoint plugged into the antiderivative. So I'm gonna, I have to wrap up in, in less than a minute or two minutes here. So here's what, here's what I'm trying to get at. We had this function. What was the function we were using with the Riemann sums just now? It was x cubed, right? We were trying to find the area underneath it. According to the fundamental theorem of calculus, 
All we need to know are the two endpoints where we're going to start 0, where we're going to end 2, and then we need to find its antiderivative. What's the antiderivative of x cubed? Capital F of x equals 1 fourth x to the fourth, right? That's what we said. Now, plug b into this. So what's b for us down here? So what's capital F of 2, and then we will subtract from that capital F of 0, right? Let's see if that's coming out on camera, just barely. What's capital F? Plug in 2. What do you get? What's 2 to the fourth power? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2? 16. What's 1 fourth of 16? 4. So this is equal to, right here, this right here is equal to 4 minus, plug 0 into this. What do you get? 0. Holy crap. What's the answer? 4. Isn't that better than the Riemann sums? That's why it's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Riemann tortured himself with the Riemann sums and Newton, Isaac Newton in Leibniz made the connection and they were able to somehow connect a function and its antiderivative and how it connected the picture to that area. And it saved, I mean, you're talking about a lot of time, right? And so uh, your quiz, pass this out. Go ahead and take one and pass it around. I know I'm on sad time. Sorry to keep you here so long, but I've been looking forward to this for a long time. <clears throat> the importance, I, I can't stress this enough to you. I think what I've shown you right now is I've beaten you to death with these Riemann sums. And then at the very end, I showed you a nice little surprise treat, right? But the importance of understanding how those rectangles worked out is vital for the rest of Cal 2 and especially Cal 3. Okay, because all of this thing is called integration. All integration is based upon visualizing summing things up. Okay, here's everyone has their copy. One of the major results of this class will be able to determine uh, the exact value of the area below a graph, whatever. Number one, use whatever logic you can to estimate the area of the shaded region. So on number one, I just want you to, you know, just give me a, just if like you'd never even come to class today and I asked you to estimate that, just give me an estimate, okay? However you want. Number two, use the summation method demonstrated in class to find the exact area. So I want you to come up with the Riemann sum I want you to do n rectangles, formula, you know what I'm saying? Okay, you don't have to go, here's one rectangle, here's two, here's three, here's four, here's n. You can start with n and just go straight to that. On the third, confirm your answer using the definite integral. Now what I meant by that is to do this, okay? Let's see how you do with this, all right? Does that seem fair? Okay, see you on Monday. <laughs>